Hey everyone, how's it going? This is my spoiler free review for Luke Cage season 1 on Netflix. Before I actually start my reviews, I want to mention a few things. One, this is a completely spoiler free review, so don't worry about anything being given away whilst I'm doing this review. Two, sorry about the cuts that you'll be experiencing during this video. I'll be moving from spot to spot as I am doing the review. With the, all that done, let's go ahead and start the review. I absolutely loved this show. I'll have to watch it a second time, which I do for all the Netflix series. But I can probably just say that it's possibly my favorite of the Marvel Netflix series. So it will be Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, then season one of Daredevil, then season two of Daredevil. Nothing against Daredevil. It's a brilliant show. It's just the strength of all the content Marvel has been putting out on the Netflix shows. I don't watch that many shows, but I can positively say that this has to be the most culturally relevant and diverse shows I have seen on TV to date. I love what Marvel are doing by showing us all sides of life from the African-American community. As far as timelines go, this takes place after seasons one of Daredevil and Jessica Jones but works alongside season two of Daredevil. You don't necessarily have to watch them, but if you do, you get a better understanding of Luke Cage, and there are more references to those previous shows in this one. I will not talk about all the cast members, but I'll talk about the ones that made an impression on me. My Terrace Luke Cage was phenomenal. He had an intensity to him with a level of sensitivity. Before I go any further, I have to say that Simon Messick, who plays Missy Knight, is an incredibly gorgeous actress. I mean, look at her. She is stunning. She's a detective in the show. She has great chemistry with my Terrace Luke Cage. And she has a skill that is somewhat similar to the detective mode or detective vision in the Batman Arkham games, which is quite amazing the way they pull it off in the show. She goes quite through the circle of emotions, which at a point is heartbreaking. We eventually also meet up with Shades, played by Theo Rossi, who is a manipulative little shit. Really great performed. I, I like the performance. I hated the character. Onto the big bads of the show, but I will not necessarily call them big bads, they're just products of the environment. So, the first one we'll talk about is Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes, played by Marshala Ali, if I'm pronouncing it right. But don't call him Cottonmouth because he hates that name. This guy is a hardcore gangster. I mean, he's got his hands into everything. And he's doing it primarily because he wants to make his community, Harlem, a better place one way or another. So yeah, he's got his finger in almost every pie in there. A man of integrity, something I really respect. If he gives you his word he's going to do something, he will do it. Whether it is in a bad way or in a good way, he will do it. Onto his cousin, Mariah Dillard who is also known as Black Mariah in the comics, played by Alfred Woodard. Uh, now, this is a character who is more or less the opposite of Cornell. She does not necessarily keep to her word whenever she says something. She uses people to benefit her own gain, and she's somewhat manipulative as well. She's not necessarily the character that was also in Captain America Civil War. I think that was a different character as well. And finally, the connecting tissue of all the Marvel Netflix shows, Claire Temple, aka Night Nurse, played by Rosario Dawson, who gets to do a whole lot more in this than her previous Marvel Netflix shows. She's in about maybe six or seven episodes. Her introduction is somewhat badass, but also hysterical as well. She has great chemistry with Mike Coulter, and we see somewhat of a dark side to her in the show. This has to be the darkest and most adult of the Marvel Netflix shows. It, they do use the n-word quite often in it. Uh, you have like white people use it, you have black people use it. They ha use it in almost every aspect of it. So in a positive way, in a negative way. You have people who claim, who believe they are trying to reclaim the word. You have people who hate using the word. But yeah, it's quite dark, it's quite adult. I don't think Anyone under 18 should watch this show. 
there are a number of changes from the comics to the TV show that kind of help as well as hinder it a bit. For one, Luke's origin is slightly different from how it was in the comics. Two, is the looks of the characters. So like Cornell Cottonmouth looks slightly different than he did in the comics. And Black Mariah also does not look as she does in the comics. Her mother, on the other hand, who is Mama Mabel, looks more like Black Mariah in the comic books than she does. The lighting and the cinematography are really good, although they skew from time to time. We also get some nice images that are a callback to the comic books, like this one you're about to see of Luke Cage with the wristbands and uh, Tiara, which is a callback to the original comic books from the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. And also we get a somewhat of an iconographic image right here with Cornell Cottonmouth standing in front of the picture of Biggie Smalls with a crown, symbolizing that he wants to be king. And you can see the lighting on him. It just looks spectacular, in my opinion. The best thing about this show has to be the music, from the composition to the soundtrack. I mean, it's not just touching on hip-hop. It's on hip-hop, R&B, blues, jazz, soul, gospel, and also black exploitation music. And it's done and handled so masterfully well. It's put in the right places and it just feels natural. In 13 episodes, you're given enough time to get to know each and every one of the characters, love as well as hate them. I mean, someone like Cornell. Yes, he's supposed to be a villain, but there are things about him that charm you to him. He has a particular smile and his laughter. He laughs a lot in the show. At a point, it really irritated me, but I really got into it and I was laughing at points when he was laughing. It's a fun, entertaining, and culturally relevant show that stays true to the essence of the characters with mild changes to it to fit the format of TV. Good story, good action, good performances, good set pieces, everything that a good TV show should give us. And yeah, I hope it will make the show the most memorable of the Marvel shows yet. With one hell of an ending, I doubt anyone will see coming. Anyway, guys, that's my review for the show. I hope this review has gotten you more interested in Luke Cage. And if you have watched it, please let me know what you make of it. Anyway, guys, that's my review. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.